Hi guys, welcome back to The Frugal Life with Mercedes. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, and if you've been watching me for a while, hello again. Um, today, I was going to go over some tips and tricks and strategies on how to begin your frugal journey. So just a little bit of background if you are new to my channel. Um, I, I grew up in a large family. Uh, my family was always frugal. We never went on vacations. My parents never drove new cars. Um, we got all of our clothes from thrift stores, different things like that. So that's how I grew up. Um, and it, to me, it seemed normal. I honestly didn't always, I didn't really realize other people didn't live like that until, um, until I was older and I was going over to other people's houses and their parents would have a new car every year and all that kind of stuff. Um, so to start with, I want to say that being fr frugal um, for some people is a necessity. So growing up, it was a necessity. My parents just were frugal because that's just the way that it was. Versus there are people that are millionaires that are frugal and they choose to, to be that way. Um, so if you are curious about being frugal um, or how to start, the best thing to do is just start. Um, start small. So let's say you've got your job and you've got, let's say for, um, let's just say that you have an apartment, um, you don't have a car payment or anything like that, um, but you go out to eat all the time, which that's, I love to go out to eat, so I get it. Um, but you could start there. Like instead of eating out, Every day, how about you eat out four times a week? Um, if you eat, if you eat takeout at lunchtime, like if you go to work and and you just go pick up a sandwich, why don't you start? And if you do that five days a week, why don't you start to only go out to lunch three times a week? And you start slowly like that. Let's say that you need a new pair of pants, so you. Instead of going to the mall and spending $70 at, at American Eagle at the mall, you could, let's check out a thrift store and get a pair of jeans for $10. Um, and then take that money that you would have spent and put it towards maybe a debt that you have or um, in a savings account or something like that. Um, let's say you go to a really fancy grocery store and to get your groceries. How about next time you try a discount grocery store or an Aldi's or um, something like that where you, instead of, you know, going someplace where peanut butter is $10 a jar, go to Aldi's where it's $2 a jar. And there's going to be some debate about that because what you eat directly affects your health, but... The other thing is too, maybe you're becoming frugal because you just don't have any money. So in the scenario I was saying before, you maybe don't have any debt, so you could spend the extra money. But let's say that you're on a debt-free journey, then I'm not saying put your health on the back burner. I'm just saying like you have to prioritize. Like maybe for a little while not get the $10 peanut butter and get the cheaper peanut butter. Because remember, you can prioritize later. But if you're trying to get out of debt, then you want to like switch things around. So again, it depends like, are you trying to become frugal for environmental reasons? Are you trying to become frugal um, to pay down debt? Are you trying to become frugal um, to save up for some big thing? Or maybe you're really feeling the pull to, to frugality. So again, it just kind of depends what you're um, situation is. Um, something else, take a look at your hobbies. And is there a way that you can do those hobbies cheaper? Like I'm a gym rat. So I love having my gym membership. But you have to have a membership at the fanciest um, health spa club place. I don't know. That's I mean, that's up to you. I go to Planet Fitness and pay $10 a month and it and it satisfies my needs. Um, but maybe you don't even use your gym membership. So maybe it's time to let it go. And that's a part of being frugal too is 
as much as I love the gym and as much as it's a priority to me, if I just was like, if I just didn't go for six months, well then that's $60 that I spend for no reason, at least in my eyes. So prioritizing. Um, also like look at your insurance, like let's say car insurance. Um, I, I've, I've heard of situations where people had coverage that they really didn't need and they just never took it off because they were, you know, just absent-mindedly paying it. Or sometimes you're signed up for subscriptions or different things and then you just keep paying it and paying it. Like again, like Hulu or Netflix or maybe some sort of subscription box. Like I do um, Dollar Shave Club. Um, and so $4 comes out of my bank account every month to send me the razor heads. But guess what? I use those razor heads. And for me, it really is a saving. Um, but if you never watch Netflix and you're paying that $8, $12, whatever it might be, then it might be time to let it go. Um, and that's a good way to start being frugal too, is writing up a budget seeing how much you spend on stuff. Cause maybe if you're trying to get out of debt and you have no idea what you're spending on stuff, you might not really even know how much money's coming in and how much money's going out. So if you sit and write a budget, then you can see exactly where your money's going and maybe you can see what can go and what can't. Another thing that I suggest is saving receipts. Now I personally don't um, usually get receipts. Um, a lot of stores just give them to you, but now they're starting to get it where um, they ask you, do you want a receipt? And I usually say no, it kind of depends. Um, so for a month or so, save your receipts, every receipt, and then you can see where your money's really gone. So when you're like, man, I have no money, where did it all go? And then you're going to see like, oh, I spent $700 on eating out this month, um, or I'm spending a lot of money on gas. And for some things you can't really help, like let's say gas, but I know people who run all over the world, you know, driving for no reason, and then they don't understand why their gas bill is so high. So kind of being conscious of what you're spending your money on, what you can cut back on. Um, another thing is utilize things that you have around that are free. So I always talk to people about the public library. So there was a time when I was single, I had my little efficiency apartment, um, and I didn't have internet. I could afford internet, I just chose not to have it because I just, it was $100 I didn't want to spend. So I had a TV and I had a DVD player and I got DVDs from the library and I borrowed DVDs from friends and family and I, you know I got you know you get DVDs from the library and different things but I also I was um a part of the Netflix DVD subscription where you don't you don't get the streaming you just get DVDs sent to your house so I did pay the seven dollars or eight dollars a month or whatever it was and I would do that for like series is so then I would like send out for like my Sex in the City or, or whatever it is that I wanted to watch or um, another thing is like Redbox. So those things do add up, but let's say that you're like trying to get out of debt. Um, you could get rid of your internet. It's very radical, but for some people you really could get rid of your internet or maybe keep your internet, but get rid of your Netflix and Hulu and watch YouTube. <laughs> um, and there's, um, and then go to your public library and get DVDs and audiobooks and regular books. Um, another thing is too, like I read a lot of books. Um, I hardly ever buy a book. The only time I buy a book is when it's secondhand. Um, I can't even remember the last time I bought a book, like at a regular store. Um, also my library does book sales, so they'll sell books and DVDs and audiobooks and CDs. And so you can get books and DVDs at a heavy discount. Um, they also have like a display year round and DVDs are a dollar, two dollars, series is, you know, whole seasons of a series are three or four dollars and there's nothing wrong with them. It's just people donated them and then the library can't use all of them or whatever. So those are, that's another way to cut down on your budget. 
Or something that my husband and I started doing was um, him and I love the movies, especially him. So we prioritize which movies we really, really want to see when they first come out and which ones we can wait. So we still to go to the movies, but we usually eat beforehand at home or eat afterwards or once in a great while we'll pick something up there, but that's hardly ever. Um, and then we'll go to Redbox when the movie comes out on Redbox. So then you are paying a couple of bucks, but then we call it like movie, you know, um, it's movie night at home. So you've got the latest, greatest movie that's come out, but then you can watch it at home for a fraction of the price. And you can go to the Dollar Tree and get those like um, movie theater candies for a dollar versus if you go to the movie theater, you're paying five or six dollars. Um, so those are just a couple of quick tips on how to begin being frugal. Um, if you guys are interested in more, just let me know. I have tons of beginner frugal tips. Um, and none of this stuff is rocket science. And there's a ton of channels on YouTube that talk about this stuff, but this is just stuff that's worked for me. And this is stuff that I try to tell people when they're like, where do I begin? And so again, it depends why you're becoming frugal, what your circumstances are. And some of them are more dramatic, like I'm saying, get rid of the internet. And I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying like, if you're in debt and you really want to get out of debt, sometimes you have to do things that are radical versus if it's more for an environmental reasons or trying to save up for stuff or just trying to change your perception on life and be trying to become less materialistic. So it just kind of depends what you're trying to accomplish. So thank you guys so much for watching and please consider subscribing and follow me on Instagram, The Frugal Life with Mercedes. And until next time, bye.